Our lab at Stanford University studies the mechanisms of aging and age-related diseases, and for that we use a variety of model systems to tackle the problem of aging, which is, we feel, the next frontier in biology. In this video abstract for February 26, 2015 issue of Cell, we're going to talk about how the African turquoise killifish can be basically used as a model system for aging and age-associated diseases. The African turquoise killifish normally lives in ephemeral ponds in Africa, in Mozambique and Zimbabwe. And it lives in those ponds that are only present for four months at a time during the brief rain season. So it's probably adapted to recapitulate a naturally compressed lifespan for those four months at a time. And what's really cool is that if you then bring this fish back to the laboratory and grow it in tanks, it still recapitulates a short lifespan of four to six months. And not only that, but during this short lifespan, it also has signs of aging and age-related diseases. So it has a decline in cognitive function, it has a decline in fertility, it also accumulates some uh, forms of neoplastic lesions and also some signs of neurodegeneration. Aging is a very fundamental problem because it's associated with a constellation of diseases, whether it's cancer, type 2 diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders. And there's been a lot of progress in the aging field to try and understand it by modeling it in the laboratory. And so far, there's been a lot that has been learned from short-lived model systems because they allow to do screen and rapid experiments. And the ones that have been used very successfully are yeast, worms, and flies. And they've allowed to identify genes that are in fact conserved all the way to humans to modulate the aging process. Um, so what we feel is that this African turquoise killifish fits this perfect niche where it's as short-lived as the invertebrate, like yeast, worms, and flies, but it does have, because it's a vertebrate, it does have the key organs and tissues that are very important for uh, human aging. In this study, we demonstrate the visibility of using the killifish as a model system for aging. We used our de novo sequence genome and identification of its genes in combination with the genome editing technology, the CRISPR-Cas9. All this to target multiple aging and disease-related genes basically taking this non-model organism all the way from a genome to a disease phenotype and transforming it into a powerful genetic system. As a proof of principle, we decided to target an enzyme called telomerase, which basically stabilizes telomeres, or the ends of chromosomes. With each cell division, these telomeres become very, very short, and telomere attrition is considered to be one of the hallmarks of aging. When we generated telomerase-deficient fish, we saw that high proliferative tissues, like the reproductive system and the gut, were very strongly affected, very similar to a disease in humans called dyskeratosis congenita. The next generation of these fish actually did not even hatch from the eggs or develop properly, possibly because their telomeres were way too short. This telomerase-deficient fish, or this mutant killifish, is currently the fastest model system for dyskeratosis congenita in vertebrates. In order to expand this toolkit, we mutated multiple aging and disease-related genes, such as candidates from the insulin IGF. Another cool thing we did is take a human variant, a human disease variant, and precisely edit it into the killifish's genome. Recent advances in genomic and genome editing approaches allowed us basically to pick an organism which is the best fit for our scientific question in our case, aging and disease, and then design a complete genome to phenotype platform for it. Understanding how a genome codes for complex traits, like lifespan or susceptibility to a specific disease, is one of the biggest challenges of modern biology. And we feel that this model system, combined with the tools and resources we have developed for it, might help tackle this challenge 
and also maybe serve as a paradigm for other non-model organisms to follow.